Hello everyone, and welcome to The Radical History of Mutual Aid. As a long-term advocate of mutual aid, it was very inspiring for me to see so many mutual aid groups sprout up across the globe to help protect our communities against the coronavirus. So, I thought it'd be nice to share the history of mutual aid with those who are practicing it so brilliantly today. So where does the term mutual aid even come from? Well, it comes from anarchism. Now, you might be thinking that anarchists are nothing but punk bands, graffiti artists, and supporters of chaos and destruction, but, in reality, anarchism is a philosophy that has roots as far back as Taoism in ancient China, and it is predicated on principles of kindness, a respect for each other's autonomy, and care for both society and the natural environment. In fact, far from being the embodiment of chaos, as Pierre-Joseph Proudhon, the man who popularised the term anarchism in Western Europe, explained, as man seeks justice in equality, society seeks order in anarchy. So, following in the tradition of anarchism, the biologist and esteemed geographer Peter Kropotkin, who looks a bit like Santa Claus, coined the term mutual aid in his book Mutual Aid, A Factor of Evolution. Peter Kropotkin was born in Russia in 1842 to a family of Russian aristocrats, relatives of the Tsar. Kropotkin's family, as, as part of Russia's archaic feudal system, owned just under 1,200 peasants and serfs, and Kropotkin described his youth as one of luxury, countryside retreats, grand feasts, and parlour games in jewel-covered costumes. However, Despite being the beneficiary of all of this wealth, Kropotkin became disillusioned with the cruelty of serfdom and the imperial rule of the Tsar. Having joined the Russian army as a senior officer on the urging of his father, Kropotkin, now secretly writing for a number of revolutionary journals, took an opportunity to adopt a government role that would take him to the far-flung corner of eastern Siberia, one of the most inhospitable locations on the planet, and far removed from the comforts that he had previously enjoyed. It was there in Siberia that Kropotkin in was inspired to begin his lifelong work that would lead to the creation of mutual aid as a concept. In his travels through the frozen wilderness, he saw not competition, but collaboration between animals as they strove to survive. From wolves hunting as a pack, birds helping each other to find food, to horses working together to protect themselves from predators. Wherever I saw animal life in abundance, he wrote, I saw mutual aid, and mutual support. Eventually, after his father's death, Kropotkin abandoned his role in the government and even refused the prestigious position offered to him by the Russian Geographical Society, who were impressed by his theory on mountain ranges that revised the entire cartography of Eastern Asia. He travelled to Switzerland, where the anarchist unions of watchmakers, working together to stop their bosses from exploiting them, won his admiration and reinforced his growing support of anarchism. On his return, he was soon arrested for his involvement in revolutionary social justice groups, but he thankfully made an escape to Western Europe, where he dedicated his life to social struggles. Whilst living in England, where he helped to found Freedom, a news outlet that is still operational to this very day, Kropotkin, remembering his time in Siberia, wrote five essays during the period of 1890 to 1896. These five essays, whilst being a valuable contribution to the science of zoology, were of great importance politically in combating the misuse of Darwin's theory of natural selection by some people to justify horrible policies of eugenics and allowing the poor to suffer and die. Mutual aid was a powerful concept, encouraging people to reject such terrible notions and instead cooperate with kindness to help everyone. In 1902, the five essays were collated and published as Mutual Aid, a Factor of Evolution. The book was immensely popular, particularly amongst natural scientists and Kropotkin's fellow anarchists. Since then, mutual aid has been a key principle amongst anarchists and the innumerable activist groups that have been influenced by anarchist philosophy, including the mutual aid groups that many of the viewers of this video are part of. A great example of mutual aid in practice are Food Not Bombs groups. Food Not Bombs started in 1980 in the USA, 
giving out free vegan food as a unique method of protesting against war. But it has since expanded to become a decentralized, non hierarchical, international movement. Food Not Bonds groups use consensus to make decisions, ensuring that every member is comfortable with every decision, and they operate via solidarity, not charity, meaning that they feed everyone, not just those that they pity or that they deem worthy of help. And they work actively to empower those that they help, um, encouraging them to help with the group and working actively to oppose the systems that oppress them. One reason that mutual aid has been so successful is because it has been used alongside another important anarchist principle, direct action. Simply put, direct action is action that is taken without appeal to or permission from a higher authority. The watchmakers in Switzerland would never have been able to form unions if they had asked for permission from their bosses. So many people would be going hungry if the members of Food Not Bombs groups relied on asking the local government to feed them instead of doing it themselves, and many people would have had to have risked exposing themselves or others to the coronavirus if mutual aid groups hadn't been formed to meet their needs or had waited for permission from local councillors. Another reason why mutual aid is so successful is that its practitioners have traditionally had a systematic analysis of problems, and are thus much better equipped to solve them. Instead of having a narrow view and dealing with only a single issue, practitioners of mutual aid tend to take a broad view and make sure to address the problems in society that are creating the issue. To further understand why this systematic analysis is so important, think of a doctor treating a patient. Any good doctor would understand that they can't truly help their patient if they only focus on treating the symptoms of a disease. Instead, they help their patient by also treating the disease that is causing the symptoms. If you are a member of a mutual aid group, it might be a good idea to discuss with others how you and your group can help society more broadly, and what political, economic or social situations may have made the coronavirus pandemic so devastating to begin with. This concludes the radical history of mutual aid. As you can see, mutual aid is a well-established principle that has taken inspiration from a variety of sources and has been utilised in a variety of places. Mutual aid has been successful because it has not waited for permission from higher authorities and because it has historically benefited from a systematic view of problems instead of confining itself to single issues. I hope that this short video has been of use to you, and that you will now have a deeper appreciation of the principle of mutual aid. And with this uh, deeper appreciation, you can use it to, uh, uh, with other people for the benefit of all. Thank you very much for watching.